Hey guys, we're joining our good friend Dan Milner with five tips to help us adapt to these uncertain times as photographers. So historically, I always loved long form, people based, reality based documentary photography projects, meaning I go find a story that I want to do, a topic. Could be a place, could be a people, or could be a specific angle. So now we find ourselves in COVID and I simply can't do it safely. And I, and I don't really have, if, if everybody was masked up and distanced, I couldn't do the work that I want to do. So I've just had to say, okay, I'm going to try something else. I have to adapt. And I came up with like five ways I'm going to do this. And, uh, and hopefully these are interesting to more people than just me. Number one, I study. So, and I, and I've, 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 there's been some tough love with this point over the past, you know, six months of working with you, Mark, not tough love towards you, Mark, but because I know that you're on the same page, but tough loves, um, for the general public, which is yes. if you're going to do documentary work, you have to do your research, right? Totally. And there's a million reasons not to do it. There's a million excuses we all have, but you have to, if you're going to do good work that adds to the conversation and what better time to do study and to do research than being in, in lockdown or quarantine. Yep. Um, I, I, I discovered a new project idea yesterday while I was riding my bike, which is where I come up with a lot of my ideas. And the project is a very weird thing that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. I'm not gonna give you the exact project, but I'm gonna tell you why it's different from what I do before. I realized immediately the amount of research I have to do for this. And the first thing I found was that there is a book available out there. It's a $60 book that's like a weird, hard to find book, but it's, it is essential reading for me to move forward with this project. I simply would not bother moving forward if I don't read this book. Because if I move forward without reading it, then I'm not crediting everybody who's already done this project before. And this is a project that touches on a subject that impacted every single human being on the planet. It just so happens to be connected very much to the state of New Mexico. Number two, you know, this is a journal, right? This is the journal that I've been keeping for my whole life, right? I've been doing this since heavily since 93, but I write in this thing every day. But there are levels of craziness when it comes to journaling. And I saw a documentary film on Amazon Prime a couple of days ago that I think everyone should watch. Even if you don't know anything about rock climbing or don't like rock climbing or are really not interested in rock climbing, there is a, 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 a documentary film called Dirtbag. Oh, and dirt I've bag, seen it. <laughs> yeah, Dirtbag yeah. is about Fred Becky. Fred is and such Fred a wild Becky, dude. And so, but what got me about Fred Becky was not, he only, he has like eight or 10 published books about climbing. And then there's a book about Fred Becky called like his hundred top climbs, which you can find. One of the things that jumped out at me was one of the younger guys that would climb with him said, Fred will stop in the middle of a pitch it's and ridiculous. you look down like what's happening. And he has his pencil and his notepad and he's sketching out the route and also taking notes. And he was this wildly meticulous note taker that spent tons and tons and tons of time in the library. And what watching this documentary made me realize was that I had sort of been leaping this chapter of journaling out, which was what I would call simple journaling, which is Fred would have pictures of like, here's the mountain I climbed in 1950. Yeah. Here's the title. This is the route we took. And my journal has never been really like what I'm doing. It's been more of a stream of consciousness kind of thing. And, I, and in the back of my head, I had some sort of hang up about simple journaling. Like, here's a picture of what I did that day, and this is what I did that day. But all of a sudden, during the pandemic and realizing that I can't spend all this time in the field, and if I did go in the field, why not document all the small things that I'm doing? Yeah. So what I've really decided to do during the pandemic is to is to really double down on the daily journal. And I think that one of the really ways good. to do that for me, which is this, this is such a, a wonderful way of having instant um, you know, instant ability to journal. And so like I slept up in my van on the mountainside last week and made a bunch of these like little, you know, Polaroids along the way. So I am definitely doubling down on the journal during the pandemic. Point number three. So here we're, we're back to the idea that we're under COVID. I cannot do with the camera what I would have done before, but I also write as well. And writing to me from in me for me personally, and I know this might sound crazy coming from someone who spent his life as a photographer, writing to me is the high art. Writers to me are are a group that you can learn a tremendous amount from. And I think if your camera, it, it's like um, it's like varying levels during COVID. So my normally my camera was up here. Now my camera abilities dropped down, but my writing ability has gone up. 
Yeah. And what I like to do is give myself targets. I give 5,000 words is a really interesting target for me historically, whereas I've decided to start taking some of the projects that I would have done with the camera and had a little bit of writing along the side and flip it around where maybe there'll be an eventual image associated with what I'm writing, but now I'm going to do 5,000 word essays without any visuals at all. And wow. this is a incredible challenge, but also it's incredibly fun. And that's one of the reasons why I read so much is because you just get so many ideas. I just I just finished yeah. one Q84 by Murakami and you know, I'm reading this thing and I'm, you know, this is not something that I would ever attempt to write. I'm not that whole sort of surrealism uh, book is not something I've ever considered. But man, can you learn a lot from from reading something like that? And Mark, you and I were talking about this earlier, um, the newsletter uh significance yeah, and if you want to talk right. about that now we should we should mention that this is a key point for you guys in terms of marketing yourself and one of the things we have to do as creatives is if you've got something you believe in you believe in your work you got to get it out to other people right well there's a lot of ways to do that and traditionally probably one of the oldest ways to do that is through a newsletter yeah so email newsletters to me i get this question at least once a week from someone somewhere that reaches out and says look milner i kind of feel like you do about social media but how do i do this without being on social media and the number one answer i give immediately is you better have an email newsletter because the engagement rate on an email newsletter is astoundingly high far higher than social media and more importantly the email newsletter signifies people who are willing to uh, to uh, uh, engage with you financially, which is yeah. very different from social. So it's about an 80% higher rate of engagement financial with a newsletter compared to social. And the newsletter builds a real community. And I have seen example after example after example of this over the years. I was telling you earlier, I know someone here in town who has a remarkable email newsletter. I know someone up in BC that basically his entire career is centered around a newsletter. I know of a photographer who apparently has 400,000 subscribers in his new his email newsletter. Wow. That is a that is a career. That is an industry around a newsletter and to your friend's point, these social networks change, adapt, you know, algorithms change. They make it harder and harder. You have to spend more time. But an email newsletter is yours. It's it is yours. absolutely yours. You yeah. own it. It will not change unless you want it to change. And so I know it seems crazy, but I would, if I had the choice between 500 email newsletter subscribers and 50,000 Instagrammers, I would take the newsletter. Are we ready for point number four? Let's go back in time, 2007 ish, 2007 ish. Blurb comes out with something called a trade book, it's a format. It's a very small, informal little book like this that was never yeah. really intended for photography. However, I realized that if I prepped my files in the right way, that I could make a book that was very, very interesting. But what I also did at the time, and this is the Moleskine Journal, is I also started a series of mixed media, ink on paper illustrations that were basically uh, inspired by the, the, the book itself. And so my fourth point is during COVID, if I don't have the ability to use my camera as much, one of the things I can do is, is go back to mixed media. And that could be ink on paper illustrations, which are, this is maniacal. This, to, this one took me like two weeks alone to do this one page. I'm not sure you can see the detail, but it just about ruined my eyesight. Um, you know, and I, I just continued to do a series of illustrations that were based on this plain book. And then ironically, I had people that saw these illustrations and said, can I buy those illustrations? Is there a, you know, a thing? The other thing I do is I use a lot of um, acrylic paints. This is a black and white acrylic that I use all the time. I think mixed media. And let me just say this. My artistic ability is almost zero. I think what it does is it forces me every time I do something with art materials or, or art supplies, I start out by being like crushed because I sit there just thinking, oh, God, I can't I don't know what I'm doing. But then you start putting it on. You just start making moves. Yeah. So mixed media would be something I would highly recommend. OK, no last idea. point is maybe the most important. I told you before that I had figured out this new story idea. So I have a title and I have how it will be delivered when I'm done. But I can't photograph like I did before. So what I figured out I would do 
is that I will basically make little mini missions by myself. And I will have to make a style of photograph that I have not made before, which is mostly images void of people. Like that to me is such a foreign concept to go photograph where there's no humans in my frame. But I have to. The first thing I do is I make I put limits on myself to make it simple. So the entire project will be made with one camera, one lens. We've talked about this a million times before. Yeah. Um, this is, you know the latest version of my 50 millimeter, but it's a 50 millimeter lens. It doesn't matter what version you use and just one camera. And then the secondary component will be my audio recorder. So this will be a mixed media story that will blend audio and stills and a lot of written copy. I studied photojournalism and photojournalism is all about rules. There's all kinds of rules. And I looked at things like conceptual art photography. And I always said to myself, ah, that's not, I'm not interested in that. Or, or those photographers only do conceptual art because they don't know how to hack it as a journalist, right? Which in some cases is probably true. But I realized something. It took me about 25 years to figure this out. But conceptual art photography is really important. And for me, it is the last remaining piece of untouched wilderness left in the world. Journalism has been destroyed in a lot of ways. And you can see that every day. But art, conceptual art photography is wide open. You can do any conceivable thing. And the projects that I'm talking about doing now under COVID are far more conceptual than straight. And, I, and it took me a long time and I fought with that forever to try to like come to grips with that. And now I'm totally fine with it. Once again, thanks for joining us. That's been fantastic. Thank right you, Migo. I will see you guys. I'll see you. I'll see everybody down the road. We'll see you soon. Adios, amigo. If you haven't already done this, I want you to subscribe. <laughs> I want you to tell others to subscribe. I want you to enable the bell so that whenever one of our new shows comes up, you hear about it. And will you guys make sure you leave your comments and like it, share it with your friends. Last but not least, I want you guys to say this wherever you are around the world in your own language. Okay? Remember to get out and capture your own images of life.